It's like a memory game. That this, really we are a very serious production, guys. It says Amelia Pod. Mm. It should say Branded Pod. Window Office. Get a photo of Slate it. One, take one. Get a photo <laughs> the date is incorrect, yeah. but that's fine. Get a photo of it. We can move. We, we're, we're on air, Ivan. Yeah. Welcome. It's like behind the scenes, like, you know, you don't want to be authentic. You talk about authenticity. We'll, like, we'll, we'll, we'll vlog, yeah, we'll vlog <laughs> it. Change the date, though. We'll vlog it. Yeah. Can we rock and roll? Welcome to, which camera am I looking in? Boom, 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 this one. Welcome to the Branded Podcast. I am very excited to be joined today by three of my beautiful team. I will allow themselves to introduce themselves because I'm sure I will say something incorrect. So Ivan, take it away. Hello, I'm Ivan, project manager at Clout. That's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> what I do, manage projects. So I'm Delia, I'm a copywriter at Clout. I'm Hannah and I'm a community growth executive. So thanks guys for your lovely introductions. Um, I have brought the team here today because the last time we had a team podcast, it was really well received and you guys loved the fact that we answered your questions. And I think a lot of value was taken away from having an opinion that wasn't just mine in the room. So really excited to have the guys here today. We put out a Instagram story on both Clout and Amelia Sordell um, Instagram asking what your questions were and if you wanted to know anything. And that could be anything from personal branding to content to relationships to life advice to whatever and we have built out a list of your questions and we're going to read them out and as a collective group of very well-rounded and educated people we're going to attempt to answer them um first and foremost i want to start with like a little bit of a fun game i, I like games let's go what's the rules go what's the rules the <laughs> I'm play. i want to play whatever the game is ivan wants to win i want to win yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so one of the things that I obviously talk about all the time is failure, because I think, you know, failure is ultimately what allows us to all succeed. And I wonder whether there's like a little bit of a format that we could start mm. in the branded podcast at the beginning of the podcast where we talk about no shame stories. Yeah. So like sharing those stories without shame of like when we fucked up and what lesson mm. we learned from them. And it could be as little as you are someone out and they said no, or it could be as big as your first business went bust like me. So you can go first, Ivan, because you want to win. Oh God, I don't know if I want to win this one. <laughs> um, I got I, I got sacked from like my first two jobs. Um, I was quite young, I was like in hospitality. First off, I realized very early on I was a terrible waiter. Um, like I can't really remember lots of things at the same time. <laughs> Mad props to waiters out there who um, can do that effectively. I've got so much respect for you, um, but I couldn't. And I tried it twice, weirdly. First time it sucked and got sacked, so it was terrible. And then the second time I was like, oh, maybe the restaurant, maybe it was the restaurant's problem. No, it turns out it was me. I was the problem. Um, and, it's me. And then, yeah, so like, that was a pretty knock. That was the like, first two like professional roles in my, in my life. And I was like, maybe I'm just, I just suck as a human. But uh, no, I, uh, I'm okay. I just can't wait tables. So, can't yeah. wait tables. There you go. I love that. You tried something twice, didn't work out. Yeah, I really should have quit the first time, but you know. Um, what made you go back a second? I, a convenience. Um, I thought maybe it's like I had some experience <laughs> under my belt. <laughs> of being fired. So I could do it. Uh, the second time actually when they sacked me, they were very kind. They were like, we'll offer you a bar job instead. And I was like, okay, sweet. I could do that. And I actually was a very good barman. Um, but yeah, waiting was just not my thing. Hmm. Couldn't do it. Didn't have the, like the memory. Didn't have like the patience. Didn't have like, yeah. It's just it, it didn't it didn't work out. I used to piss off the kitchen people. I used to piss off the customers. Um. So yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I've I've I've, I've developed uh, more <laughs> skills right. since then. But yeah, waiting is just not my thing. I got fired for my first job too. Yeah. I spoke about it last week's podcast. Delia. Ah. Um. This is not that big of a deal, but I always think about it um i used to intern at the fashion closet and i would just like send things back to pr companies and we would send stuff in like coat bags and i accidentally sent a coat bag that was for one of the biggest editors in the magazine mm -hmm. and she like stormed into the fashion closet and she was like who sent my coat bag and i was like oh, oh my god <laughs> that was me so that was like not a big failure but it all stuck with me like that was scary Dude, i was scared she sounds like an asshole yeah she was i would i Oh my gosh, I said good morning to her one time after the day after uh, Kobe passed away. And I was like, good morning, how are you? And she was like, as good as I can be considering Kobe died. And I was like, I'm, I'm just an intern. Like, I don't even know you. <laughs> was she a basketball fan or was she just being miserable? She was just, she just, yeah, she never was nice. Oh boy. I so, hate people like that. Yeah, so I was like, fashion industry, not for me. Yeah. Do you know what's interesting Interesting about that though? So my my first proper job I had, I had a boss a little bit like that. Like she 
she wasn't quite she wasn't mean but she was cr like really neurotic and like quite crazy um i won't name the company because i don't want anyone to go and have a look but i learned more though from her than i have done from any other boss mm. Mm. like she taught me how to navigate difficult situations how to negotiate with unhinged mm. people how to deal with um characters that are not the same as you like i would never have like done that like as an employer but like knowing how to deal with someone who behaves that way i think is a really grossly undervalued skill so you probably took a lot away from that yeah definitely it's such a fast-paced environment it's just like i immediately was like mm -hmm. sorry fix the problem like there's no point in me like crying and being like oh, i'm so sorry and like she just wants me to fix it yeah, and that's definitely. what i learned from that situation like you, you mess up you just go and fix it as quickly as you can do you think a lot of people take stuff like that too personally Definitely. I do it all the time. I have to check myself and be like, actually, it's literally not about you. So just just go and like fix the problem, you know? Mm. Yeah, definitely. Hands. Um, not like the biggest fuck up, but I used to work for the probation service and I sent a wrong email to like the whole every prison in England <laughs> when I was supposed to just send it to like one prison and everyone was so annoyed. I got so many like angry responses. <laughs> was it and release the prisoners? Like <laughs> release the guy from the gates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like even that deep. Like, Open the gates. <laughs> like in that field, everything is really serious. And there's, yeah. obviously it's like data protection. So I was like, as soon as I realized, I was like, oh my God. But I've been there. I mean, I have pretty good Not attention to detail now. So <laughs> I was everything say, I check. You've you, you yeah. got a real attention to detail. You notice everything. Yeah. It's important to suck at at least two jobs, I think. Oh, To 100%. figure out like what you want to do, but also to like to learn what it feels like to just not be good at something yeah like if i had if i started my first job and i was like awesome at it like like waiting for instance i think i wouldn't have like learned as much or wouldn't have been like wouldn't have taken as much out of it as if i was like if i sucked and then like okay i definitely can chalk that off the list of things and you learn like what you're not good at is on like learning what you're not good at is i think so much more important than learning what like you're good at when you're that young i think i i, I think the shit jobs are the best jobs because they teach you the yeah, most. Yeah, definitely. Character building as yeah. well. Yeah. Like, In a way. <laughs> yeah. No, but genuinely, like, character building, but also, like, I think when you do the shitty jobs, you then really appreciate, like, when you're good at something, mm -hmm. you work for a good company. Yeah. It makes you, I don't know, a bit more ambitious, a bit more, like, okay with like putting in the graph because you know what it could be like yeah. it also makes you treasure like what being good at something feels like because mm. like being bad at something obviously i'm, I'm gonna state the obvious here but it, it sucks it fucking mm. sucks um and to have those two things to compare it against so when you are nailing it when you're in your stride when you're in that kind of flow state and you're nailing things it's like this is where i want to be like that's the focus that's the lens and it's like you want to avoid the pain of like doing it doing a crappy job again yeah love that well it leads me nicely onto our first question so the first question that i got back on my instagram story that i posted when i asked what you guys wanted us to talk about and if any of you have any questions please send them in we would love to answer them in the next podcast um okay question number one is i have not figured out my career and i'm 29 time is ticking for me what the fuck do i do <laughs> um i mean look i'm i'm I'll 32 and um i haven't figured that one out 100 like i think don't think about it like that's the weird thing like if you enjoy what you do just focus on that and then you're you're naturally going to gravitate to something that you like doing and you'll carve out a career path there i changed my career twice and i'm 32 like i keep flipping in and out um obviously when i think about it too much and i start panicking because i'm like oh i don't know what what my like 10 year or 15 year path is or like you know what the route to retirement is and honestly like the more you think about that the more you're going to stress yourself out um, I think it's like Ricky Gervais. He was like 40 before he actually became mm -hmm. a writer and a comedian, right? So there's loads of stuff like that. Like the really cheesy one is Colonel Sanders was like 60 when he founded KFC. Yeah. yeah, which is, yeah, that one's kind of cheesy, but like it, it, it's kind of true. Vera Wang, 40 years yeah, old. From sure. Designed a dress. Yeah, it's super, it, it's true. And before that, they were nobodies or, or not nobodies. They were just like average people doing their jobs until they found their thing. So mm. 29, yeah, man, I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress. I think the thing is for me is to your point around not having it all figured out. I have been a, worked in a salon. I've been a door girl. I worked in sales. I worked in recruitment. I ran my own fashion brand. I've worked in marketing. I've worked in B2B marketing. I've worked in employee engagement. I've worked in people and culture. Now I run an agency doing something completely different to all of those things. And I think 
as you go through life, people will try and shove you into a linear path. Like the, it's like the classic question when you're at an interview, where, where do you see yourself in five years? I don't fucking know, yeah. Steve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where do you see yeah. yourself in five years? Like who the fuck knows? I don't yeah. even know what I'm having for dinner. <laughs> like, exactly. do you know what I mean? And I think in this day and age, it's a really dumb question. It's also mm. a really dumb mindset to have because you're allowed to change your mind. You're allowed to do a job for 10 years and decide you fucking hate it. You're allowed to, yep. you know, go to university and decide it's not for you. You're allowed yeah. to try jobs. You're allowed to job hop. Like genuinely, obviously, please don't you leave me. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like genuinely, I think I am such a pro squiggly career kind of gal. And I think the more employers realize the value that people can bring to their organization who've had multiple different exposures to multiple different industries. It's like, it's like when you look at marketing, right? You never learn how to market something differently by looking at your competitors. You look how to market your company differently by looking at people who are not in your industry. And I think it's the same thing with employees. If you want, like to your point, you came from the probation service and yeah. you're the best fucking community manager we've ever had. Thank you. But yeah. like I, a, lo a lot of the skills that you picked up in that, yeah. like attention to detail, knowing how to navigate difficult situations, mm -hmm. know how to answer people in the correct way and the tonality that's required to do so, and da -da -da, all makes you a really good community growth manager, but yeah. like, it, you haven't got experience in it. So Yeah, I definitely changed my career like over the years as well. And like coming out of university, it was always like people asking, what are you doing now? You finish university and like telling them what you do. But now I'm like not ashamed that yeah. I've changed career because you like build up skills and stuff. But, so like it's fine to have that, right? Like if you are genuinely that focused mm -hmm. and you have a 20, 15 year plan and you're sticking to it and that's what you're happy with and you're nailing it, fantastic, like go for it. But the majority of people don't. And like, mm -hmm. I think that with that, that comment, I don't know who what their name is, but like that comment is kind of reflective of I would say 75 to 80% of people who are in that age bracket. So like, honestly, it's not, it's not, it's not a thing to stress about. Also, like I founded Clout when I was 30 and that was only because I'd had like seven careers before that, <laughs> like legit seven careers before that. So I think it's fine. Um, next question. Some of these are hilarious, by the way. Like, so we asked my, in on my Instagram stories, people to send in um, questions and some of them are funny. Like, how tall are you? <laughs> you don't ask him, answer me, question mark, sad face. Are you married? I could answer those, but they're not aimed at me. So I don't know how relevant <laughs> that content's going to be. <laughs> what else? Should I cold approach a girl? That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Should I cold? All right, ladies. One second. I'm yeah, I'll go for it. Should I, if you're a, anyone, man, woman, whatever, if you're, if, should you cold approach people if you like them? What's that mean? Like walk up to them and just be like, hi, I like you. Give me a number. I, want to I think if it feels right, then do it. How would you like to be approached, Hannah? Um, as your boss, asking oh. as your boss. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I do like it when people just like randomly come up to me and like compliment me and then. Um, You're like a magnet, yeah. I've seen you on a night out. <laughs> no. Honestly, Hannah walks into a room and everyone's like, who's that? I know, we walk anywhere I mean, and people literally. are like, yeah, I mean, that? I happened at Pride, didn't it? That's what <laughs> Literally, you're like, a Christmas party. No pride. No, but I'm saying at the Christmas party. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. That did happen. Yeah. As soon as you walked in, you were like beeline. It was so funny. I love, I love this for her. <laughs> That's so funny. But yeah, yeah. So, so how would then, what is the ideal way to approach Hannah? Mm. I'm not sure. It's just like the confidence of someone coming up to you, isn't it? And being like direct. That I like. Tell you. Expansion. Okay, um, I'm gonna give my cultural perspective because I think that British men never cold approach Ooh, girls yeah, cool ever, you <laughs> and it really bothers me. Like right. American men are so confident. They are. Really? I was in Las Vegas airport, I shit you not, for 23 minutes and I was approached by like four mm. different people. I was like, I'm just going for a long flight, guys. <laughs> Stay away. I'm like, my glasses, my breath stinks, like shut out. Okay, but relax. they're down, they want They want to get in there. They're they want to like, get in there, they, yeah. They want to make it around. known. <laughs> yeah. But British guys, they just they just like, you know, like look, just, yeah. just look yeah. at you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, what is it's that? It's quite lazy, isn't it? Yeah. British oh, guy yeah. I mean, not everyone, yeah. but it's quite lazy. But I think I think a compliment is the best way to get in because it's mm. like, yeah. Then you can kind of the way I respond will will let you know if yeah. if I'm like feeling the convo or not. You know. <laughs> As a man. <laughs> Should you go to do, do you want sh sh the things you should or shouldn't do, or the things that like whatever you'd like the, to the answer? <laughs> your take, my special tactic. <laughs> What's your pick up line? I'm, I'm terrible. Yeah. Stare awkwardly and hope for something <laughs> <No>. to happen, <laughs> <laughs> and just hope they come over. Exactly. Or, or like wait for like I some stare, stare at them. Like wait, they... wait for some divine intervention. For, you know, for like yeah. it to randomly start raining and you have an umbrella and they don't. You know, yeah. something like that. But um, that's, that's never happened. Rip. That's never happened. <laughs> um, 
I would look, I mean, the cold, the cold approaching and like the confidence and the bolstery and mm. like the, the, that kind of thing. If I can just bring this back to like, you know, personal branding and like that whole thing, like that's just like human psychology 101. Like yeah. that works for dating. It works for marketing. It works mm -hmm. for personal branding. Like if you're bold, you have an opinion, you stand by yourself, you back yourself. Like you're obviously going to get more eyeballs. Um, I wish I did that a lot more in my younger years when I actually was dating. <laughs> Might have had more success. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> and I didn't have any success. So, um, well, I had some. But the point is, is like, yeah, like it's easy to say that, yeah. but it's not easy to actually implement and, eff and eff effectively do it. It takes a lot of practice, but you kind of have to do it, get some badges and scars and then figure out like how this works. Like this conversation doesn't happen when you're younger. No, no girls are like, oh, I, why, why don't guys come up to me oh, and yeah, do it like okay. this? Like if there, there is no rules, so you got to kind of have to find your own path. Um, but yeah, relates the same thing to marketing, personal branding, sales. It's all like human psychology yeah, stuff. So. Mm -hmm. I think there's two there's two things here. One, <clears throat> how you approach someone I think is really important. So I have this strategy that I use. Ooh. <laughs> but I'll, I'll be like, like you've obviously got to like, sorry, I was just looking at my phone. It looked like there was someone on my phone for 20 minutes, but it, actually it's a screenshot. I must have <laughs> on the phone to a friend. Oh yeah. For 20 minutes, I was like, ah, oh, this has been going for a very long time. And he's gonna exclusive to podcast. podcast. <laughs> well, it's good. It means that they're interested. Yeah, they're interested. <laughs> and I love that they've never moved. Anyway, um, so I have this thing where, and I, I, I've made so many of my friends do this as well, and it fucking works every single time. If you see someone that you like, you, as a woman, you need to make the first move. Like so many women don't do this ever. Because they're like, oh no, the guy should chase me. Mm. Yeah, fuck that. Like, if you want to make shit happen, you, you can't just wait yes. awkwardly in the rain with an umbrella. Yeah. You need to create a pathway for them to know that you mm -hmm. like them so that then they can chase you and so they can come, whatever. So what I used to do when I was like, if I liked someone, say I was in the gym <clears throat> and I was using my equipment and I had like beeline and like whoever it was I thought was cute. I'd go over to them with my like weights and I'd be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like I've left my water downstairs. Like, would you mind just watching this stuff for me? And I'd be like, and they'd be like, yes, I'm like, great, amazing. And then I'd go down, I'd go around, so I was like, wait, like five minutes. And then I'd come back my <laughs> And then I'd be like, oh my God, thank you so much. Like, you're such a lifesaver. I just, I'm so thirsty. The touch as well. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much. And then smile at them and then just start keep doing your weights again. And it's literally that interaction mm. creates a pathway for someone to then ask you yeah. something back. And it almost yeah. gives people permission mm. to talk to you. I think men today, particularly, I know I'm sure women feel like this as well, but I think men today, particularly, are scared to approach women because they are worried about what the response to their approach is going to be because a lot of women don't respond to being approached in, in a good way to men they're not attracted to like if you're attracted to someone your response will be positive if you're not attracted to someone you'll be like why are you asking me and like no yeah. no woman will understand what and this is my second point no women will ever understand what it's like to be rejected because women don't ever get rejected <laughs> men get rejected <laughs> So I think if you can be nice about it, even if you, you know, if you're someone cold approaching someone and then the person who you're approaching is then unkind to you, that tells you everything you need to know. But if you're that person that's being cold approached, just remember that it's taken fucking balls for that person to like pluck yeah, up the courage know. to walk mm -hmm. across the room and be like, hi, yeah. I'm Ivan. There's going to be all the mates. He's like, I'm going to do it. And he's like, you do it. You know, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ew, why are you talking to me? Shit. Yeah. <laughs> who are you, you ugly man? Oh, oh God. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm not saying me. I'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think like, we, I think everyone can be kind, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Like, so much, like no, but thank you. Yeah, yeah I'm always yeah, kind yeah. to them. Always. Yeah, I yeah. think it's really, really important. I think it says a lot about your character too. Okay, that was an interesting one. Next one. Um, is there an ideal stage to be, oh no, that's not the right question to be asking. Maybe another time. Um, advice for someone who's been in survival their whole life and starting again at 30. I just went back to uni. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, well, um, I can kind of like, not, not I, that sounds quite dramatic. So obviously I hope everything's okay. I hope they get that, they've, they've sorted that um, and like they're, they're doing well now, so fingers crossed. Um, I completely like changed my career at, at COVID. I quit my job. I didn't really have another job lined up. I was just like, I'm going to go and learn a new skill and I'm going to implement it. And COVID was a great time to do that. So I was working in sales. Um, I was doing okay. You know, I wasn't sales, like making loads and loads of money, but I was doing all right. Um, and yeah, I just didn't want to do it. When everyone started working from home, I was like, I hate doing this from home. The whole yeah. reason why I wanted to do this is to be with people, yeah, to travel cool. around the world. I was yeah. going to like, you know, some cool places and I was like, awesome. Um, and it kind of distracted me from the sense of like, oh, this was the job itself was, wasn't really what I wanted to do. Um, so during COVID, I, I, I quit. I gave, I think I was not working for like eight, maybe 10 weeks while I was learning how to create content. So copyright, I was doing like blogging, like just 
learning how um, content strategies work, content marketing, all that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, fortunately, I just started freelancing. But I basically had to rebuild like my salary from scratch as a freelancer, which took like probably about six months mm. to get cl even close to it. Uh, and then I started working full time in, in the job. Was but when like I joined my first full time content job, my sal salary was like less than half what it was when I was working in sales. So it's it's terrifying. But it felt good. Like if like I felt like this was where I was going to go. This was like my longish term path. And I like every day I enjoyed creating, I enjoyed writing, I enjoyed researching. So I was like, okay, I can I've got the, the stamina for this. So um, I guess in a way, it's like, it, it, will, it will happen it will come you just gotta like have faith find that thing that excites you and just keep plugging away at it um and just look for opportunities because yeah ultimately like but lots of people who restart their careers at 30 don't realize they've accumulated a huge amount of experience in their other positions and other roles so when they restart they're already starting off in a really great place mm. and that's something that's important that people should probably think about you had a question i was just asking ivan if, if he was self-taught but yeah, so, so I, I did, yeah. I paid for a couple of courses. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was like reading. I bought like loads of books. Yeah. I just annotated. I just made loads of notes. I just did like these digital courses. But like, I didn't wait to like learn everything to start. Like I was, I was working at like the job and trying to get paid as I was doing the courses mm -hmm. as well. Cause I was like, I have, to, I have to make money. I have to pay my rent. I've got, I've got stuff to do. So I couldn't just linger and like, oh, I'm going to spend three months learning. It was like, no, I've got like three weeks to learn this and then I have to go out and find a way to make some money from it. Um, and yeah, like it, it's worked out well. Here I am. So Here he is. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I'm, I'm really grateful for that decision. I think COVID made a lot of people rethink things. Um, for me, it was like one of the best decisions yeah, I've made. Definitely. So yeah. COVID, I think for a lot of people was like horrendous because they lost loved ones. They lost like yeah. their jobs and whatever. It was genuinely one of the best things that ever happened to me. And I, I my perspective slightly different because you're coming at it from a career angle i also quit my job in covid yeah safe job whatever okay. stuff to found clout but the thing that was the most like start again for me thing that came out of that situation was my relationship i left my husband at the same time and it would like to have spent 10 years with someone and have like in your head have built up like all I want is the white picket fence and the the 2.5 kids and the da, da 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 and then have that and realize it's not what you want like to admit that to yourself and then almost yeah. go back to ground zero of like dating again was like fucking mental mm. and I remember being like I put it off for so long because I was like well what what if there's no one out there yeah and I yeah. think you put a so I was talking about this podcast actually yesterday with um a woman called Isabella, she has a podcast called uh, The Day I, so shout out Bella, you're amazing. Um, she, her podcast is kind of premised on like, what was the one day in your life that caused like the catalyst of change for lots of things. And, and this was sort of the day that I picked. I said the day that I came home and asked my ex-husband for a divorce was like this wow. massive catalyst of change because I had to go back to source. I had to go back to zero and work out what I wanted and who I was outside of a relationship, yeah. which, I actually didn't know. You know what's crazy? Like I used to go, oh, I don't like bugs. Mm. I don't like being outside, whatever. Because that's what the relationship wanted. But actually mm. since I've not been in that relationship, I love yeah, being that's outside. Crazy. Like, interesting. I, go, I go hiking every weekend. Like I go on holidays where we're like yeah. fucking up a mountain. I want to do Kilimanjaro at some point. Yeah. I went out and did a skydive recently. Like I love the outdoors. I, I never knew that about that. myself. Yeah. I never knew that about myself because I was in this like, thing and I liked what they liked and mm. so you know to start I actually think starting at zero is a really positive thing I don't think it's a negative thing whether it be a career or a relationship like you should never fucking settle yeah ever yeah. like you get if yeah. you're lucky 85 years on this earth if you're lucky you should never fucking settle it definitely like strips down like your identity to its core right and being like all these other things that were part of your life at like that have formula formed like a sense of identity or maybe like put an impression on like what people expect you to be like when you have to start again you have to like reforge that and you go back to basics about what really matters to you yeah. and like what you really care about and i think like that's a super healthy thing whether yeah. or not you can find a way to like recharge that in a career not to say like you have to burn everything down you know to start again like you don't but if you if for however you do it if you can find a way to like strip things back and recharge and like reset to basically like what makes you happy I think that's like super important. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I feel sort of similarly about moving to the UK where mm. it's like I had nothing to fall back on. I didn't know anyone here. Like I didn't, I had a new house, new neighborhood, new like, you know, public transportation system. Everything mm. was new. 
And it was like a moment for me to strip everything back and just be like, okay, what, what am I doing here? What are my goals? What are my dreams? Like, how do I make adult f friendships for the first time in my life um, and build a community for myself? Like, that's scary, but it's also so exciting because everything is in your control to make happen for yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Do it for the plot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Make a good story. So I, th I think if, if that person is, is, is listening, I, like, I think another really thing that we said, like, most of these things are like people feel like it's just them and they're like mm. oh why is this happening to me it's like it's happened to most people <laughs> so like that's just part of life so like that's the part of that story arc it's like at some point most people in this world are going to find themselves at a place where they're probably going to have to restart some things in their life mm. so it's like yeah. it, it's just the way it is like i don't I, I would i mean i don't have the stats but i would guess that a, like most of the people in this world have had to have that oh, everything position. like even when you think about like when you retire you got to find mm. a new I mean, I'm never fucking retiring. Oh. I can tell you that. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I was gonna say I was like, that doesn't sound like it doesn't yeah. sound right. No, definitely, definitely happening. But like, even when you retire, you've got to then rethink what the purpose of your life is. When you have grandchildren, you've got to rethink what, you know, your role in your children's life. Like, there is change is fucking change. I want to quote Team America: "Change is inevitable. Um, <laughs> change is inevitable. Like, it's 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 one of those things that is absolutely guaranteed. And I think actually, a lot of people fear going back to zero. They fear starting again because it's like. It feel it's almost like when you're at a a, 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 a crab table or like mm. at a um, poker table, right? You you've got all your money in the pot and you're playing a shitty hand, but you want to keep gambling because you want to win the money back that you've already put in the pot. Like when actually it's probably more beneficial to your life and more. I will produce a higher ROI if you just walk away. It's the sunk yeah. cost fallacy. Yeah, like. exactly. Yeah. I think we spoke about it for the book, right? Mm. I think the, there was a, a section of the book we were talking about it. It's the same thing in your life. Sometimes, particularly in relationships and particularly in jobs, people are like, I'm so in, in now. If I leave, like, it's almost like it's got rid of all the work that I've put in, which is the dumbest way to look at stuff. Like, I don't see my my marriage as a failed marriage. I see it as a very successful marriage because I got two children out of it, but it wasn't right for me at the end. And that's okay. Like, I didn't lose the 10 years that we were together by not being with that person anymore. Yeah. Like, right. you, 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 like, when you start again, you lose the things, but you have the most you valuable thing, so which is much. the experience and the insights and the, the growth anyway. Do it for mm -hmm. the Without sounding plot. cheesy. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, that's super For true. the plot. For yeah. the plot. Good luck to you. Yeah. Wherever yeah. you are. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you. Like, good you. luck to you. That's so wholesome. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Sending like, you good vibes. <laughs> <laughs> you reminded me of um, Dorothy from um, <laughs> <laughs> which, which the boss. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> See you soon, Tin Man. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, do you believe burnout and failure are linked? Do, don't uh, doesn't seem to ha uh, people don't seem to get burn out burnt out when they are succeeding. I call bullshit on Absolutely. that. Absolutely <laughs> <laughs> bullshit. I, I've worked with like in my whole career. The one thing I has stayed consistent in my career is working with like um entrepreneurs <laughs> entrepreneurs and founders so similar profiles to to this one to amelia um and, and the people. one thing that you say the people who are successful have always had that have a burnout story like at some point multiple and, times, and yeah. the more successful they are the more likely they are to burn out because it's the addiction of success that leads mm -hmm. to burnout 100 yeah. percent. do you know what's really funny i saw gary v say once he was like you don't burn out if you love what you do. I was like, fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Do you not burn out? You don't burn out, Gary, because you have a 200 million pound fucking company and team of like 7,000 people yeah. running it for you. You hear that, no. Gary? <laughs> you hear that, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Gary. Don't judge me. For no, we secretly, we, 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 <laughs> we do we love, you. love you. Gary. I'm, obsessed with, I'm obsessed with Gary. But no, like I've, I've flirted with burnout and was nearly fucking hospitalized mm. two years ago because I was so unwell because I'd worked to the absolute brink of like what my body was capable of doing. And it wasn't because we were losing, like we, it was the most profitable time for clout and we were flying and we were doing a huge amount of money. We had an amazing team and the work we were doing was like unbelievable. But I was so addicted to like getting to that next level, next level, next level, next yeah. level that it was like, there was no stop. I didn't take, I didn't take a holiday, like a proper holiday, I think until like year three of clout. Yeah. I worked wow. every single trip, which by the way, if you if you have children, you will understand that first of all, holiday is not a holiday. Mm -hmm. It's basically yeah. babysitting <laughs> your own children in a sunnier destination, if that's your bag. But the second thing is I was working and babysitting my children in a, in a sunny destination. So it was like twice the work that I would have had if I'd just been at home. Um, so yeah, I think it's bullshit. Like you, you, you burn out mm -hmm. when you don't listen to what your body is telling you and you try and do a million things at once. The best advice I've, or the best statement I ever heard around this topic was you grossly overestimate what you can achieve in a year and you grossly underestimate what you can achieve in five. And I think if people think a bit big picture about how they are tack 
or attack different situations, whether that be their career or um, sales or brand building or personal branding or whatever, don't don't focus so much on like the individual shit that you're doing. Focus more on like what are the activities that you need to get to to get up the mountain and then let that be your measure of success in five years time, not like, oh my God, I need to do all those things today because you will definitely burn out if you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. There's Very also true. like a, a thing here that, you know, the way it's worded is, you know, it, it's it's um people who are successful don't uh, don't don't suffer from burnout. So they don't talk about but it. But it just also depends yeah, on what they they're defining as success. Like if, if someone is successful and they're like, because they are time rich and they have all the money and they're like they've chilled out, like, okay, fair enough. But like for most people who will um objectively see success, so like on social media or like by speaking to someone without knowing the full story, like that to, to, to assume that that person has not suffered burnout just because they are objectively successful is uh, is a mistake. I completely agree. Completely agree. Did you want to add something, Hannah? You started saying something. No. Are you sure? Yeah. Come on, Hannah. Should we all just be silent and stare at Hannah? No. <laughs> no, I was just saying like most of them probably don't speak about it, about their burnout. I also think that the more vocal people are about balance and like, mm looking after yourself and that kind of stuff is because they can afford to be balanced yeah, yeah like i can't afford to be balanced people i've got fucking 12 yeah, exactly. people's mortgages and rent to pay like <laughs> i cannot be balanced but it's okay you don't need to be unbalanced for your whole life it's just it's unbalanced yeah. at the start of something i think and that's true for careers too like when yeah. you first start a job you are fucking balls to the walls well i was anyway balls to the walls <laughs> like trying to get like you know your feet in and like know how everything works and like make relationships with people yeah, in the team yeah. or whatever you end up working like double how you would normally work for the first three months because you're so excited about everything and then of course it kind of like teeters out yeah. but yeah, I think it's, I think burnout is not something that evades anyone, actually. Yeah. Um, okay, how to lose fear and stop giving a fuck about what other people think about me. Hannah, you're very good. I, I think you just ooze, like, <laughs> I don't give a shit energy. I don't know, like, any BDE. advice, though. I don't know any advice for that. Have you, have you always just been, like, okay with who you are? No, I wouldn't say I am that person, though. Really? Yeah, people always say it, though. People yeah. say I'm really um, what's it? You come off like direct. Unbothered. Yeah, yeah. I'm really like direct. I think I you know. you have this like yeah. quiet confidence about you. Like you look everyone in the eye when you they talk yeah. to you. I you feel say like it's all the mean. astrology thing again, but so I'm gonna talk to us about advice. astrology. <laughs> so I'm a Scorpio rising, so <laughs> I'm very intense apparently. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> I love it. Our producer <laughs> is uh, a Scorpio rising as well. Um, we sh we should talk about natal chart. That should be a whole podcast that we, we do. have another podcast about this. Have too. another podcast. Too wee wee for today. It is so, <laughs> but it's so fucking accurate. Yeah, I was I showing know. someone their birth chart the other day, and they were like, "I was reading it to I them. They're like, oh my god, that's me." I was like, "Yeah, it's your birth chart. Yeah. Yeah. You have to look at the whole chart, not just your sun sun sign." I'm Libra. That's where people go wrong. Libra moon rising, I think, which is why I'm so yeah. airy fairy. I'm yeah. Libra. You're yeah. Virgo, but I'm, I'm a Virgo, but like I'm, my, moon, yeah, my yeah. moon is, my moon is, is Libra. Libra. Yeah. I think that's why you said you didn't cry for like ages. Yes. I never cry. Yeah. I do now. I schedule them. <laughs> I schedule them in twice a month. I cried today. I yeah. had nothing to offer yeah. about the astro about astrology. <laughs> Ivan's like, I think it's, up. no, I, actually, I, I know about it from like a mythological sense and a storytelling yeah. sense because I think it's fascinating. But when people start relating it to like characters, personality characteristics yeah. or like but the moon so phases, accurate. I'm like, okay. So yeah <laughs> if people don't get it if I'm we like, if we fine. did if we put <laughs> him fine. in the pattern right now yeah do you know what time you were born uh, no no could you find out uh i could ask my mum okay, but that... she probably won't be able to tell me right, this is another we, episode yeah. I think. yeah i get yeah. everyone's everyone's birth in the charts team. and we yeah. can put it on social media yeah <laughs> this is this honestly guys like i always and this is why this type of content always does so well it's literally just a group of people talking absolute fucking shit yeah, <laughs> about the stuff that we find interesting but everyone else finds yeah. it interesting too because it's the same shit that they talk about yeah yeah, like, yeah but let's great not great resonance guys let's That's not, how not um, <laughs> let's let's not under undervalue the questions that are being asked about yeah. like i was like yeah <laughs> Stick to the no, let's like, back to fuck your moon stone. <laughs> <laughs> fuck your woo woo shit. Let's you let's let's offer some value. Um, is that it? What do you mean that is valuable? No, yeah. it's, no, no, I agree. I, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. It's just not the evidence based. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I, no, I, to science. be honest, I, I take yeah. it back. I do yeah. think I do think it is very interesting. I've just always like had a weird uh, rejection to mm. like people predicting how I'm going to behave. Yeah. I find I, I don't like people it's telling me how thing. I should. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how I, I should act. But that could be something in your chart. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't like people telling Probably me what to do either. Okay, yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe yeah. you're an Aquarius. 
Yeah. No, I'm not. Why are you? <laughs> you might have a Aquarius in your chart. Well, if yeah, you, you might. I've got you should be able to guess chart. based yeah. on my personality if it's. Accurate. Yeah. What is why, why, why should I be oh, able to guess? Know. Because based on like who I yeah, am. Yeah, but that's what, not. It's act, not. Like, per, it's not your your star sign is not personal. To, like it's really personal to you. It's like a very general uh, thing. Mm. Like, but so, but if I say it, you, people will be like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> what do you what do you think I don't, don't know enough I'm a Sagittarius they? yeah that's really yeah I can see that's that surprising. really they're really confident and like yeah but that surprises me really yeah oh. I, w- I would have said Capricorn oh, Sagittarius. interesting mm. yeah I have a lot of Capricorn in my centaur car. yeah the archer anyway cool. moving on <laughs> I'm a Taurus if anyone was wondering <laughs> we know you're a Taurus <laughs> perfectionist <laughs> yeah. has to get everything exactly right I, thought, you're, I bet you used to lo- I bet if you made a mistake on your diary you used to rip the whole page out and start again oh yeah yeah sure. see I, I know <laughs> fucking Taurus honestly you lot Taurus you're mad sweet. you are up. sweet yeah. but you're yeah. also like ov- overly perfectionist like yeah. to the point where it's like yeah. Yeah. but I'm a Virgo that's why we get on I'm the same Yay. slightly psychotic <laughs> that links to the, the fear thing though like uh, 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 Trying to do things too well is like a is a fear of not of yeah. like oh, yeah, of putting pleasing. it out there and like yeah, but no it's also like a fear of of not of wanting to actually put anything out for yeah. because it's going to get judged or procrastination people are hate it. like that's that's one thing but like how to deal with it um, I mean look I could probably recite a bunch of uh, generic cheesy stuff that I've read online and make it sound good and like really like mm, that's interesting <laughs> honestly I, I don't have the right like I I struggle massively with this like of just like doing something you know going out your comfort zone because other people are gonna look at you and judge you like i think that's something working in a personal brand and she's been like super helpful for that by the way but it's still something that is terrifying at like 32 it's still mm-hmm. something that you put something out there you're like oh god people are gonna look at it and judge mm-hmm. it um, I, so i've only got to a point in the last 18 months where i don't give a fuck like I genuinely don't give a fuck, and I don't. I don't mean it from a in a negative way. Like I'm like I don't give a fuck. Like I don't care whether you like my what I'm saying or you don't. Like, or and I also don't care whether you don't like what I'm saying. Like I'm totally indifferent to both. Mm. Um, and that is a really powerful place to be because it means you really do live authentically because you're not worried about your things you say, things you do, things you write, produce. You know who you spend your time with, how you spend your time, impacting other people because you just don't even think about it in that way i think about it in the way of like how my delivery of something might impact someone like empathetic wise or emotionally yeah and i'm very conscious of my like really good example of this is um i always make sure to because in in starbucks the girls have got their name tags on their thing i always make a point of saying thanks marie or like thanks ava or like whatever Mm -hmm. because i can see and like because i know that's going to make them happy not Mm. like so what i mean by that is like don't be a fucking asshole but also don't base the value of who you are and who you want to be on whether or not other people think you're good enough. And I think to, back to your kind of point about this perfectionism, I'm a real perfectionist. I have un, often unachievably high expectations, mainly of myself, mm-hmm, but yeah. also of other people. And that comes from a fear of not being enough, like, and, and basing my value on what I create and what I can create, not on who I am as a person. Yeah. And I think, it take it, the only way that I've got to a point where I really have stopped giving a fuck um, and stopped being scared about trying things. And as I joke all the time, I have that chain on my bag over there that says do it for the plot because I g- genuinely believe like everything's for the plot. Yeah. Like you are the producer, the star, the act, like of your own film, like just fucking go for it. But the only thing that's made me as confident as I am today is posting content and being told that I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> like yeah. over and over and over and over yeah. and over well, again. We, we've talked about that from the other day uh, when we were at the pub, actually. We talked about um, from a creative standpoint. So anyone who's creating and putting art out there or, or putting anything creative out into the world, like there's that great book from um, Stephen Pressfield, The War of Art. And like uh, we were talking about, it. it's like mm-hmm. the artistic expression is not your identity. It's it's coming through you. And it's like it's it's like a thing that you do Uh, that you channel but it's not tied to your identity and the more that you can start separating what you create and the art that you create from who you are as a person the much freer you're going to be to Mm. create in a carefree way that's not necessarily going to hurt you if people react to it badly yeah it's like it's you don't need to use your what you create as a source of validation it's just an expression of your personality exactly yeah i think that's awesome okay we've got a couple more questions um to just to spin through um how important is it when you have a personal brand to have a separate social media outlet for your company brand? Hannah, as the queen of community. Um, 
because people buy from people and but do you think if, i think what they're asking is do you need to have separate accounts like do you need to have a company brand and a personal brand oh. or do you just put everything through one channel like as in okay. if you if if this if clout right and amelia mm. sordell like would would it be beneficial for clout to have only amelia sordell no yeah i think it depends like if you're let's say you're a um a solo um consultant or coach right and you're mm -hmm. like a, a uh doing this like a solopreneur kind of vibe and you're 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 booking like one-to-one -one coaching sessions like high ticket stuff in that case it probably is not as relevant because your personal brand will be the company it's like that's what yeah. people will be engaging with and people will be learning from i think if you have a comp like a small an sme you probably need to separate those two things out my thing is do you want to scale like if you if you want to scale your business, you have to have a separate company brand. You have to. If your business is like you said, a consulting firm, where you're an NED or you're a coach or something, and it is like you know Delia Roland or like yeah. Hannah Emery Consulting, and that is you, you never have any plans to hire a team and build it out and whatever, mm -hmm. then I'd go go all in on your personal brand because people, as you said, people yeah. buy from people. Yeah. And ultimately, if you are in that kind of space, they're buying from you. Mm -hmm. Like they're not buying the service that you're selling; they're buying the service that you're selling delivered by you. Um, whereas if I think you want to scale, you have to have two separate things because a personal brand is not infinitely scalable. It's definitely more mm. impactful. It definitely reaches people better and it makes more of a difference in terms of ROI to your the attention that you're getting on your company brand. But your company brand is infinitely scalable because it's a brand, it's not a person. There's only 24 hours that you guys have in a day to be able to execute on your personal brand, whereas a company brand can be like a whole thing. Um, so that's why we invest so heavily in the clout brand as yeah. well as mm -hmm. as my my personal brand and, and you guys personal brand as well yeah. um we we'll have to we're gonna wiggle on because my producer's looking at me going we're, we're running out of time guys <laughs> um, <laughs> he didn't actually say it like that he's got a very deep manly voice he said we're running out of time <laughs> um <laughs> sorry ollie <laughs> um how do you actually stay organized and up to date with social media trends how do you actually Mm. Um, you're the queen of social media yeah, yeah, I, I guess just using the channels like yeah. the socials how how yeah. look, okay let's dig into that do you intentionally scroll or do you just go oh i've seen something really cool when you're like doom scrolling at 3am and like bank it mm, i think it's like a bit of both <laughs> i love like them. directly like looking for something and then a bit of just like scrolling because you do see a lot of good stuff and you're just like doom scrolling but it depends what it's for What's the best trend that you've seen recently that you think could be applied to someone building their personal brand? I don't know. Like, have you seen anything on TikTok? Like, because one of the things that I like at the minute is like these trending audios and like people then applying them to like their specific subject matter. Oh, yeah. So, for example, um, I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to think of an example. I saw one um, earlier that was like, oh, this is a vibe and 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 oh, this yeah. is a vibe. And she was a, she's a fashion creator. So she was like, every, this is a vibe was like a different outfit. Mm. But you could also apply that to personal branding and be like, this is a vibe. And it's like, TikTok is a channel to build your personal brand. But then this is also a vibe oh, yeah. and that can be linked into build your <laughs> Like it doesn't really matter. Which, like, do you know what I mean? I yeah. like, I think a lot of people think that platforms like TikTok, it's hard to apply that to their, their own brand because they're like, oh, it's for dancing teenagers actually it's not like you can no, you have can. a lot of fun yeah, with it yeah. yeah do you think people get a little bit too uh obsessed with like trend hopping right mm -hmm. like if you like cre and sacrifice that for like actually creating quality content yes like yeah. oh like i've seen this work for a for hundred other people and so i'm just gonna copy it mm -hmm. with some slapdash stuff over the top and hope that, that like the trend rides me through to success mm -hmm. i i think if people can just focus on creating really great content and connecting with their audience at like an emotional level, making sure that their content pulls on those emotional like levers and triggers um, in an engaging way, worrying about trends is gonna become less important. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but like that's how, that's what I think about content. I come from yeah. like a, a, a long form background and applying that I think to short form can be super valuable, yeah. especially mm -hmm. with the idea of like focus on quality. And then if you see a trend, great, you can hop on it at the opportunity, but don't, don't create your content strategy based around tr trends yeah, because they come and go trends. so quickly. It's ridiculously how quick they come. But also, would you, would you, wouldn't you argue that if you're doing that, you're not actually building a personal brand? Because why would anyone follow you if you're only just using trends? Right, exactly. That's what I mean. It's like the trends should form like 5% of how you, what you do. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. great, like can be great opportunities to go viral, fine. But even going viral, it's like, okay, you're going viral, but why? Like, and who? And like, you know, it's probably more important to get like, 
a few thousand views for the really core niche audience if you want to monetize that than trying to go viral with just a bunch of random people who are never going to do anything yeah i agree with that completely i think um i think there's an argument for doing like i like doing them because they're fun and like i'm yeah, just like just generally be, like i'm generally a bit just of personality a bit of sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. add something to it yeah. you don't just jump on the apple brat dance just because it's not like, yeah. you know what apple, I mean? brat, apple brat dance what is that oh, we're gonna speak later about you later. yeah I'll yeah we'll later. do it later <laughs> okay great i'm gonna be <laughs> doing an apple brat dance show. guys like, yeah. um, but no like I, th I think there is a time and space that i enjoy doing because they're fun and i think it also helps me build my personal brand because it allows people to see a bit of my personality in that the silliness um but like the core of my brand needs to be about yeah like and i think about all my favorite creators very few of them jump on trends they have a format that they yeah. own yeah and they deliver in that's that the, i think that's the important thing you don't have to jump on trends to create mm -hmm. to build a, a, a good personal brand and to be like successful on social media you you don't have to can if you want it's cool but like it shouldn't be the thing that like determines your success i just got a this yeah, from yeah. all right. so okay. one more question we'll one more question one more question just got a time out so we'll Make go for sure. another five should okay. we do dun, dun. Da -da 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 -da. Um, my personal brand is getting mixed feedback on social media. How do I never get the conflicting opinions? First of all, who cares? Second of all, you should care. The only thing that matters is your opinion, I think. Like, for example, your your personality is a, a magnet, right? Mm -hmm. Like all of us have met people that didn't like us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But why would you want to be friends with them if they don't like you? It's no, true. Ivan's never met <laughs> like, <laughs> everyone like that. Is it negative comments on if it just said negative feedback? It sounds it sounds to me like they're posting stuff and people that they know are going, Oh, I don't like that, or do I, I do like that? I think mm -hmm. that's great though like that what a great litmus test for like finding out what people like like right. you should most social media is always going to have people who are like ah oh, that's bullshit or oh you're fake or oh you're like whatever um and then there's going to be people who love what you do like the whole idea of creating social media content is opening yourself up to everyone and everyone's going to have weird opinions about stuff so like don't stress <laughs> <laughs> one thing one thing like um I think Joe Rogan does this really well on his part. He always says, like, don't read the comments. Don't yeah. like, who cares? Create good stuff, have great conversations. Don't give a fuck mm. what people are saying online. They can and be just quite don't funny. even read them because it's too toxic. Like it doesn't I don't help. read them anymore. No. I don't How long them. did it take you? <laughs> Three and a half years. <laughs> Three and a half years of sleepless nights. Literally, like <laughs> I'm not joking. When, when I did that, when I did that video, um, when I said a Porsche doesn't make you happy, and I got literally every person in the entire world that has ever come across. Porsche, sorry, Porsche. That was a lot of comments I got. Was like, it's not Porsche, it's Porsche. I don't give a shit what it is. Okay, Steve, who probably has never even had one or driven one. Um, but the comments Be I got more on constructive that... with your feedback, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> the comments I got on that video was like, oh my god, she's so fake. Look how fucking fake her lips is. Her yeah. face is. And I was like, this the is video. my real face. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it just boosted the video anyway. So it did. It got 1.5 million yeah. views. So thanks, Steve, who doesn't Ooh. have a Porsche um yes. but yeah good advice <laughs> right thank you so much guys for joining me on the podcast how did it go for the ones that was the first podcast it you survived was, yeah, it was fun. fun it was fun thank I'm you glad for we made it us. Free. was yeah. this doing your first one too yeah Oh my god, two virgins. Yes. I've not done one of these either. Just, <laughs> just saying that's my first one too. Oh, oh my god. I have, I have three virgins. You were natural, so we was joking about being yeah. influencers. I've done oh, yeah. podcasts before, just not influenzas. Not <laughs> They're all influenzas now. Um well thank you guys so much for joining me on the Brander Podcast. That's I actually fun. love having you. you guys here. That's I think it's fun. a really yeah. fun, interesting conversation. Yeah. If you enjoyed this episode and you liked um me swinging out some questions to the team and seeing what the fuck they came back, Graham, <laughs> let us know and we will do this again. Let us know in the comments. And if there's any questions that you want answered as well whether that be about personal branding life astrology yes we should do a podcast called astrology <laughs> yeah. 101 with hannah um oh, who like, reads no. birth charts and <laughs> <build> communities <laughs> crystal <world>. uh, <laughs> mystic hands um then let us know in the comments as well and as always please subscribe and like in where this podcast wherever you are watching it the more subscribers we get and the more reviews that we get the more people we're going to reach and the more of these episodes that we can bring you and i will see you next week on branded by millie Sodell. Bye. Love you, love my children. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode. I absolutely love doing these podcasts and I would be able to reach a hell of a lot more people if you like and subscribe. So thank you to all of you who have already liked and subscribed. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave us a five-star review so we can reach more people.